Hello and welcome back to Careers Talks Live with Max from The Young Project, part of Trentbridge Community Trust. We're here for another Careers Talks Live, this time with Nick Mellers. Do you want to say hi, introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Nick Mellers. I'm the Managing Director of a consultancy company here in Rushcliffe called ISPB. Um, and as part of that, I'm also looking at what skills we need in our county for the introduction of 5G uh, and all the exciting technologies that come with that. So that's me. Excellent. I think it's it's going to be quite an interesting one because, I don't know, you don't really get... 5G seems to be something that's not so much talked about and, and it seems to be something which is quite far off. So I'm interested to kind of explore that a little bit more and, and what your experiences have been with that and the technological side as well, because quite a lot of people are interested in 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 technology and IT and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's difficult to find that route in and, and get the information, and get that step up. So I, I guess we'll, you've kind of alluded to your, your job title and, uh, and what you do. Um, what does, so you said it's like consulting. What is, what is consulting? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question because of course it's anything mm -hmm. and that's no use as, at all as an answer, but it is the truth. That's, you know, it is whatever somebody wants you, wants some help with. Um, to, to make that a bit more sensible, um, the kind of support that I give to businesses is around business development. So that's winning new business. Um, there's a lot of stuff about bidding for work. Uh, so a customer would issue a tender to say, we would like a new computer system. And that would go to several suppliers and they would have to provide a written response to, uh, to explain why their solution was the best one uh, and the commercial side of it, how much it would cost, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anybody who leaves school and uh, university is immediately able to become a bid manager. Um, and that's because when you're at school and university, you are trained to answer the question. Turns out when you've been in work for 10 years, you forget that and people will write the most ridiculous twaddle in bids and then complain they don't win the job. Um, so um, I get to I get to be paid for telling people to answer the question, which is kind of neat. Uh, but the, um, the 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 piece of work that uh, that you and I were chatting about just then, the five G connected forest project. My role in that is to work with a whole collection of businesses in Nottinghamshire to find out how they might use what 5G brings. So first thing is, I'm not a technologist. <laughs> I have worked in uh, corporate IT a bit, but I'm not a technologist. Um, I'll let you into a secret. I have broadband installed last week for the first time. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, have, I have lived my life in houses without broadband for the last 10 years. Uh, that's how I can see. I don't know if everybody can see your face. Your face is a picture here, Max. <laughs> the picture of a child going, oh my God, you poor deprived person. <laughs> so, but the point is, it's not actually about the technology. It's about what the technology can bring. Um, mm. And that's really where the fun of being a consultant comes into it. And, and consultancy, as I say, can be all kinds of things. But the idea that, you can understand something and share that understanding with a customer to help them understand how to make their business better. And that might be how to be an HR consultant or an IT consultant or a business development consultant, or frankly, you know, go on to Indeed, type in the word consultant and see what answers you get. You'll get every possible idea. Um, but the idea is that you have a set of expertise and some skill. And frankly, you have to have interest because it's hell of a boring if you don't. Um, and then you share that and you work with a, with a company and they then are able to understand and implement that. So when, we, when I talk about 5G, for example, I have no clue how the technology works. 
Mm. But then I have no clue how the internet works. I don't need to know how the internet works mm. to have a social media account or to run a website or to do online ordering or, or to have customers ordering from me. You don't have to know what it is in order to then look at how you might use it. Um, uh, and that's where consultancy comes into, into the game, if you like, um, by being that translator. And, and one of the things that we're going to find with when 5G arrives is lots of things that are kind of possible, but not in practical terms, suddenly will become possible. So you'll be able to, I'm not really sure whether this is anywhere near the question that you asked. Max. <laughs> I'll, get a bit, I'll get a bit carried away because it's really great, exciting stuff. So if, uh, if we talk about um, hairdressing, uh, you wouldn't think about that as an IT tech subject. If you went back 20 years, <laughs> sorry, bad example. <laughs> if you went back 20 years to a hairdressing course, you wouldn't have talked about uh, having a website. Mm. You wouldn't have talked about the importance of social media. You wouldn't have talked about online booking services. You wouldn't have talked about any of those things. Mm. Today, if you do a hairdressing course, you will have a module on all of those things. In the future, you will have a, model, uh, a module about 5G, not in the technical sense, but in the what can it do for a hairdresser? Hmm. Again, anybody that's watching this as a video will understand the uh, irony of me talking about hairdressing, but um, the idea that I can go and sit in the hairdressers and they can say, what, what would you like doing with it today, sir? Um, what, would you, what style would you like? I mean, oh, well, I'm not really too sure. Hmm. And I can sit in front of the mirror and have projected a whole collection of hair designs, basically, onto me as I sit and watch it. And then go, oh, can you make that one a bit lighter? Hmm. Oh, you, yeah, what does it look like? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, okay, I'd like that at the back as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll have that one, please. The, the virtual reality world... Um, and the 3D modeling world that that goes with, that will be enabled by 5G, and that will be in your local hairdresser in 20 years' time. It's so it's not, just, it. it's not just about wires and telecoms engineers and things like that. It's about yeah. how we might use this, this ability to send masses of data in times that are so fast you and I can't make any sense of them. Hmm. Um, we're looking at a project in uh, Sherwood Forest where we're going to have a virtual reality world in, in near the forest. So that when you go there as a visitor, you'll be able, potentially, we haven't written the storyboard yet, um, potentially you'll be able to play with Robin Hood. That would be cool. Um, technically, you can have multiple versions of that. So I can take my kid and they can have a Robin Hood world and I can be shown the history of the forest and what that tree I'm looking at is and how old it is and how healthy it is all through augmented reality mm. but that needs somebody who understands visitors to help design things that are attractive how it's how we use this technology it's not the technology in itself we're going to try uh, to do drones flying above the forest that will actually be able to monitor the health of the trees from above and potentially be able to go down and pick a leaf up to bring it back so you can then examine it to see if it's uh, diseased or not. Wow. Actually, technically, that's all relatively straightforward. Mm. I, 5G, it, it, you know, you can send a drone up. You and I both know people that fire drones around Nottingham. Mm. Um, you, you can, that's old technology almost now. Um, but the ability to link it with 5G, to put it into areas where you can't fly these things, to be able to send immediate date information back, and then you go, what might you do with that? I had a conversation with some people last week 
to say how might uh, if you if you had a campsite, what might you do if you had the connection that 5G gives you? Um, and they were then starting to talk about virtual reality music festivals. Um, firework, in inverted commas, firework displays with drones. Mm. All of these things are there if we capture the imagination of people to, to apply them. Probably a long way from answering the question, what's your job title, Nick? Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I was going to say, so, so to kind of sum up what you said, because I think that's a really interesting project and, and it gives people a bit of an insight into what you actually do like day to day and, and the sort of things that you work on. So consultancy, I guess, is like having a certain skill and then sharing that skill with another person over a longer period of time in order to help them to get better at said skill in whatever that might be, whether that's IT, HR or whatever. Is that, is that, is that what you would define? I, I, think, I, think, that's, I think that's fair. Uh, and, and some organisations employ what they describe as internal consultants. Hmm. Uh, and of course, then there are also consultancy firms. So the big ones are people like PwC, KPMG, uh, all of whom have got offices in Nottingham. Um, and they will do, they provide that advice. Um, in those cases, you'll be working as part of a team. They've got standard career structures inside organizations like that. Mm. The beauty of consultancy is you do get to work on a variety of different projects and a variety of different places. The downside is you can be sent literally anywhere in the world. Mm. Uh, and, um, and it's not for everybody. Mm. Uh, it, there's a, uh, there can be quite a bit of stress that goes with it because you know your client is paying for your time and they're expecting results which may or may not be possible to achieve um, mm. but um, so if, if you're if you're interested in applying technology um, again all, all of the big consultancy houses uh, have career structures around that and so kind of what so at the moment you are managing director of a, a consultancy firm what was your route to get to that stage what what jobs have you done before before that how have you what was your journey um apologies to any careers teachers who are listening i left school as soon as i could which in those days was 16. i uh, i went to college to do catering and i dropped down to after a term and a half mm -hmm. And I got a job in a finance office filling in finance forms. In the olden days, we did that with pens and paper. Uh, these jobs don't even exist anymore. Um, and I didn't even know the, which organization I was working for. Uh, I genuinely didn't. And, and it turned out on day two that I joined the civil service. Oh, wow. Genuinely didn't know that. I just got a job in this training organization in their finance department. Um, and so I, I carried on doing that. And then there was a, a project that came up uh, and I thought, well, that quite sounds quite good. So I got involved in that. And then there was an opportunity to go and do a different type of work in a different part of the country. So I went and did that because it sounded like fun and it was a bit more money. And, uh, and then I got another, I got promoted and I moved to another part of the country. And 34 years later, I left the civil service. Uh, and I think that's one, of, another thing I would say is that the route, I'm not convinced there's a, I, I have from time to time tried to plan my career. Mm. The only thing I've guaranteed is that nothing on that plan ever happened the way I thought it was going to. So um, <laughs> I think it's one thing to have like a shape of an idea and, uh, and, and to understand what, what kind of turns you on mm. um, uh, uh, and also a sense of realism about what you can achieve. I probably didn't have that for most of my career, but still. Um, but, um, but then it's about what opportunity comes up. Um, and I've been very fortunate that the opportunities that most of the opportunities that have come up for me, I've been able to grab. Um, and that, I guess you'd call it flexibility, but I, I, I don't, I'm not sure I think of myself as desperately flexible, but 
but you know the idea the opportunity to see take see an opportunity and then just take it yeah um you know there will never be a perfect opportunity um there will always be a reason why it's not a good time to make that change i i i i uh i lived in preston and i got an opportunity for a shed load more money uh, and a really interesting job down in bristol and i went yes brilliant and then the next day i met a stunningly attractive young lady in preston and i had to move house in two weeks time and i genuinely was going oh well should i give up this career opportunity to stay with this in preston with this stunningly attractive young lady and i have to say i didn't um but um you know there'll never be a perfect time a perfect opportunity there'll always be things where you go oh i'm not sure um, and the other thing we, we often get and you know particularly early on in your in your career you'll also get a lot of actually am i good enough to do this is this the kind of thing that somebody like me should be trying to do um and, and again without being too silly about it i think generally the answer was going to be yes um I, I think there's a danger in winging it too much but um i think you if you sit back and wait for the perfect thing it isn't going to happen and you are going to be no yeah definitely i think i think there's always an element of uh doing what's right for you and and kind of don't feel I don't feel necessarily trapped, but you know, you could, you can always move on and equally you can always stay put if you feel like that's the right step for you. Like there's no set route, as you say, to get into any career. Like you can take whatever route that you feel is right at the time. And you know, you don't necessarily need to go down a conventional route. You, you can kind of do what you feel and, and end up somewhere but as you say, I think it's good to have some sort of overall plan uh, on where on where you think you want to end up, because then you've got some kind of direction that you can that you can go in. No, absolutely. I mean, the other the other thing is um, when you have this conversation with a young version of you in thirty years' time, they'll laugh at how old-fashioned what your what your world is in the same way that i laugh at how old-fashioned my world was when i started work in 1976 our organization didn't have computers though so they didn't have any um the department of employment that i joined had a, a bit one big computer center over on merseyside with those things that looked like they came out of Space Odyssey. Huge computers and, mm. and, and, and they, 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 they had the, the power of your fingernail, but they were the size of a shed. Um, and, and I'm now talking about me being a lead on a project about implementing 5G. That's just in my work career. So the things that will be relevant in your work career and anybody's work career in 25 years time may not even have been invented yet. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't I have no idea what there will be. Um, they, they may well not even have no, been no. invented. Yeah, absolutely. So I was gonna say, do you have, um... If say someone sets their mind on being a consultant or getting into consultancy or civil service or anything that you've done, what sort of tips or advice would you have for people that are kind of wanting to get into that? Is there any, anything that you can tell people which might help them? Okay. I, I think if I pick on the civil service thing, the thing about the civil service is everybody thinks it's really boring, really dull, and you get stuck in an office doing the same job for the next 30 years. That has not been my experience. Uh, I've moved all over the country. I think I've lived in five or six different places in my civil service career. I've done a whole variety of jobs. Um, and yes, you have to deal with bureaucracy, but frankly, if you work for a bank or any organization, you will have to. Um, the, um, 
the thing about civil service jobs is a driving instructor, uh, sorry, not an instructor, a driving examiner is a civil servant. Somebody in the tax office is a civil servant. A coast guard who rescues you uh, if you go in the muddy bit of Skegness is a civil servant. Um, the idea that the civil service is just people who sit in offices is wrong. So all I would say as far as that's concerned is it's not desperately well paid. It's never been desperately well paid. It tends to be relatively secure, although frankly not as much as it used to be. Um, um, and you do, it is big enough that you do have an opportunity to move into different areas. So I wouldn't write it off if you were looking at options because it's boring. Um, it can be, but you know, frankly, anybody's job can be boring if you don't go into it in the right way. Um, uh, yeah, it, I've just realized that we've not, we've not really explained what the civil service is before diving into it. It might be good to rewind a minute and, and just kind of outline exactly what that actually is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm assuming we've got about three minutes left. So <laughs> It's fine. We can overrun if we need to. So, um, so when people talk about a career in the civil service, they're essentially meaning uh, working in a government organization. Uh, that's what a civil servant is. A civil servant is somebody who works for the government. Um, now, this isn't about politics. This isn't about who the prime minister is or, or things like this. This is doing the stuff that the government wants doing. Um, Frankly, the people negotiating Brexit are civil servants in the same way that, as I say, people who do your driving exam are civil servants. So it's, it's a huge, it covers a huge range of things. Um, the people who work for Job Centre Plus are civil servants. Uh, it's, it's huge. And, and so when people go, oh, I'm joining the civil service, it's a description, but it's not very helpful. Um, government, uh, because you're spending public money, government tends to be quite process driven, which can be frustrating, um, but it can mean you make a real difference. I had, I had a job at one time where I was responsible for a computer service uh, we paid out ninety-three billion pounds a year. Ninety-three billion. Yes, that's a lot of spending money. But you, you know, that's that, change. That's. <laughs> I never got any of it. <laughs> um, but so, so to explain that, we were the government department that paid all the local authorities, Nottingham City Council, Rushcliffe, whoever. We paid them their grants. Hmm. So the money that a local council got came from the central government. Central government get it from your and my taxes. Um, so we were spending that amount of money, effectively spreading it out across the country. Um, I don't know anybody else who can say that they were responsible for spending 93 billion pounds in a year. Quite something for the CV, isn't it? Well, it turns out, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. But then when you, you, sorry, you asked a two-part question. So um, what you'll probably, what you find these days is uh, you'll use, in the civil service, you'll usually go for a particular job. So you'll see jobs advertised working at the job center, for example. You might see job in Nottingham, you may well see jobs working for what, DVSA, I think they're called, the driving standards people who are based in town. Mm -hmm. uh, HMRC, the tax people, they've got a big tax office in Nottingham as well. So there are quite a few areas uh, in the city that, that do that stuff. To be a consultant, you've got to know something that's useful. Mm -hmm. um, so being a junior consultant, you're probably going to be working in one of the larger consultancy organisations. Um, and there they will be looking for people who can communicate well, who can explain concepts to people um, and who can help people apply ideas. Um, 
at my stage of my career, people employ me because I know stuff that they don't. Mm. Obviously, when you start your career, you don't have that experience. Um, so it's more around working in a project team um, and working with people who do know some stuff that other people don't know. Mm -hmm. So we we mentioned a bit earlier about like 5G and um, that you do a whole host of different things. And this might be a difficult question to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, what what does like a typical day look like for you? Um, right. I'm, let me just check. There's nothing sensitive on that. I, I'm not going to give you too long on it, uh, but I am just going to turn around and show you my whiteboard. Okay. Uh, that is uh, my to-do list, and uh, it covers. Uh, some stuff with a university about how we might uh, inspire young leaders. Mm -hmm. It's got some stuff about how we might create a business centre in North Nottinghamshire that businesses can come to and uh, try out their ideas using 5G. It's got an idea I have with a company in the States who make gaming consoles right. and they are looking to launch a new console and i don't game but i think it's really cool uh, and they're looking to do a global launch of it and i want them to come to nottinghamshire to, to launch that oh uh i'm working with oh this bit sounds boring I'm working with the local enterprise partnership you will know what that means but most people won't uh, uh, on a, what a digital skills strategy for Nottinghamshire might look like. So that is what skills do we need for this and the coming generations in work uh, if we're going to make the best out of the technology that's available to us. Uh, I've got some assignments to do for a course that I'm doing for myself. Um, this is my own studying. This is, I'm not, that's not my job. That's just me keeping up to date with things. Uh, and I haven't done an assignment for two weeks, my whiteboard tells me. <laughs> I'm so busy. Um, so much time, so little doing anything. Uh, the next one is about another innovation centre that we're looking to create in North Nottinghamshire. The next one is about how we might work with a project in Worcestershire to uh, share what they're doing on training people in 5G and how we might do some of that in Nottingham. And the final one is whether we've got time to bid for some money for a school in Mansfield to do some um, post-COVID training. Wow. That is uh, quite a variety of, of, um, of things on your list. I'm, I'm intrigued as to how you kind of start like international work because I, I think quite a lot of young people want to do they like the idea of traveling and obviously it's it works for some people and it works for and it doesn't work for others and it depends on what stage of your career that you're doing it in but i'm just interested as to how you even begin to start working abroad to begin with or how you build up those conversations and connections um the reason i left school at 16 was because I wanted to join the Navy okay. to see the world. Because I was a 16 year old who wanted to see the world the same as everybody else. Um, I have no practical skills, so I decided I'd have to be a cook uh, because I'm useless with any mechanical skills. Um, so I went to do catering. Oh. You know, I finished up doing 5G 40 years later in Nottinghamshire. Um, in terms of taking opportunities. It's a bit like I was saying before. It's increasingly difficult to just chip up and get a job mm. abroad these days. You know, it, the world's not like that anymore. Um, you occasionally. Um, so what I would be saying is start looking at organizations that have a global presence themselves. So again, organizations like PwC, KPMG, um, all the big consulting houses, and indeed all the big technology houses will be part of uh, global organizations. 
uh, I spent a, a few years working for Tata, who were actually an, an Indian IT company. Uh, mm. I was working in London, um, but um, my uh, my daughter's a, an engineer. She works for a company that's headquartered in uh, Germany. And so she's been looking at opportunities to go and work over there. She didn't apply for that job, but she applied for a job here in the UK doing something hmm. that she could then A, prove herself, but B, would then be eligible to apply for internal vacancies elsewhere. Ah. Uh, so I think it's, I'm not sure how easy it's ever been, but um, and we'll leave the Brexit conversation for another day. But the um, the I, you're not going to sit here and apply for a job in America, mm. in most cases. Yeah. Uh, but if you have an idea uh, that you want to see more of the world through work, um, then you're probably going to finish up working with a larger organisation. Yeah, uh, yeah. because they've got international opportunities they've got the connections already built up which is yeah. uh, one 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 uh, one exception to that is if you're into sales and marketing and things like that um there's obviously a big emphasis on exporting uh exporting selling to the rest of the world so yeah. um so if you're into uh the marketing sales business development side of the, uh, things and you think of that as a career uh, then there is potential for for travel and for seeing more of the world um, and that applies to companies of all sizes um, uh, so there you if you were looking for a job um, and you were interested in that side of things you would be looking to ask them where do they trade in the world? Um, uh, and they could be a tiny organization. I mean, I know a couple of businesses in Lincolnshire, they're quite small. They've got maybe 50 staff and they sell half of their product outside the United Kingdom. Wow. Uh, so the people involved in sales and business development there spend a good half of their time schlepping around the world. Mm. Wow, that's really cool. So um, what would you, I, I don't want to go like, I'm conscious of time and I don't want to go on forever, but I, I do still want to ask you a few more questions. Um, what would you say was the biggest factor that like helped you in your overall career pathway? Was there anything that you have did in particular that's, or anything that you've experienced which helped you? I think I would come back to this flexibility world and, and just kind of going, actually, I could have a crack at that. And, and I, I, I think I could make a good job of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I say, I, my, my career has not followed a, a smooth path. Uh, I've been, frankly, very fortunate. And a couple of the bad decisions I've made didn't hurt me as much as they could have done. And a couple of the good decisions I made kind of worked particularly well. But um, the um, the going for it is is really the thing. Yes, you've got to be a decent communicator. Uh, increasingly, we work in a virtual world where team skills are more difficult to to build because you know in the days when there were eight of you sat around a table all day long you you built up a team better uh, so although i was, certainly wouldn't say i was very good at this uh, i think things around learn, learning to communicate learning to work with people um, recognizing that even the people you think are rubbish have got a, con, a contribution to make and respecting that contribution um, mm -hmm. i think you know, most organizations, and I know your boss, so clearly not in your case, but in most organizations, um, we think our boss is a fool uh, because they don't understand what really matters. Um, that's never a good career move to tell them. Uh, 
what you find as you move up through your career is you see a whole load of stuff that you never even knew was happening because your boss was sorting that out. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, particularly when we start out in our careers, we're all, well, speaking personally, we're all very arrogant uh, and we're all vastly overconfident uh, and we all know the answer. I was talking to somebody uh, last week uh, and he said we were doing a project about world poverty with a, a group of school leavers and they sorted it in 20 minutes. And it's like, yeah, if world poverty could be sorted in 20 minutes, we probably wouldn't have world poverty because somebody would have sorted it out. Um, and I think there were, you have to recognize that in yourself a bit, particularly mm. when you're starting out in your careers, because stuff is obvious to you. And why doesn't everybody else get it? Yeah. Um, and, and so there are things around learning patience and learning tolerance um, and being respectful to, to people. Um, and, and frankly, the technical skills become slightly less important than those what people call interpersonal skills. Um, if you get the interpersonal skills right, you can often blag the rest. Again, that's probably not official careers advice, but still. <laughs> I, I think what the point that you're getting at there is is important, though, the fact that like, and, and I guess this is putting it in a more formalized context, is that interpersonal skills are essential for every job and they tend to be kind of inherent and things that you make up you whereas your technical skills can generally be learned over time and the interpersonal interpersonal skills can be developed don't get me wrong and they can be uh they can be changed to, to some degree but ultimately you have you, everyone has a set of interpersonal skills which makes them a, a good fit or a good employee for certain jobs Whereas the, te the point that you were getting at was the technical skills tend to be fairly specific for certain jobs, but you can learn them through the experience. Whereas your interpersonal skills, they tend to be what you already have and what you will continue to develop over your career. I think, I think that's fair. I'd say one thing I have to say, I think you can grow and develop your interpersonal skills. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, I, I occasionally shudder at, a, at the 20 year old Nick <laughs> and, and the way he, uh, he, he acted in work on some occasions. Uh, so I kind of hope you, that I've developed some of those. Mm. I, I think the other thing that might be interesting is that I work for myself. Uh, ISPB is my company. Uh, and lots of people go, oh, I couldn't work for an organization. I can't have people telling me what to do. Uh, I want the freedom to work for myself and, and whatever. Uh, that's great. That's absolutely great. The one thing you don't get is any freedom to do what you want. <laughs> because actually, I have about eight bosses on the go at any one time. Mm. And they're all equally demanding. Mm -hmm. Some of them are smarter than others. And, and, and so this idea that, I have to try to be careful about what language I use here, but the idea that you can kind of go, oh, sod it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work for myself so I don't have to, I don't have to put up with all the, people talk about internal politics. And mm -hmm. by that, they mean all the conversations that go on in an organization and people saying things in order to get on and creep to people that they think will reward them, all those kinds of things. That's what people mean when they say internal politics. And lots of people throughout their careers go, oh, I'm going to jack this in and work for myself. I can't be doing with that. The one thing you find as a consultant is every job has that because if I go and work for a company writing a bid with them, I go and sit in their organization. I deal with their technical team and their marketing team and their finance team. I have to deal with all of that stuff. Mm. Um, and so you, the, idea, the idea that if you have your own business, you don't have to put up with that stuff is false. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have your own business, please do. It's an awesome experience, but don't do it because you don't like working with people. And that, I guess this will, this will be my last question, unless anyone else has got any, any questions that they wish to ask. Um, in terms of setting up your own business, 
how would you describe that process? Was it like an easy process? How long did it take? How do you find having your own business? Uh, the technical answer is it takes about 40 minutes. You fill in an online form, you have a company. Uh, in my case, um, you pay somebody to, to tell you how much to pay yourself. Uh, so I have an accountant. That, how, how grand is I, I have an accountant. That's, now I, I, I have a guy I used to uh, drink with who uh, does my accounts every quarter. Um, that's a tiny piece. Um, so he, he deals with the tax returns and things like that because I'm really bad at that. Um, and when I did it for myself, I finished up getting fined by HMRC. So oh, lesson, lesson learned, if you're rubbish at something, pay somebody else to do it, particularly if it's critical to your business survival. Um, but, you know, anybody can set up a limited company. It is literally, I think it's about 80 quid now, to, and, and you can have max limited if that's not already been used by somebody else. Um, so, but the real bit is what's your business for? What are you going to do? What services are you going to offer? What is your market? Why should somebody buy from you? How on earth do you price whatever it is you do? Um, how do you let people know that you're available to be bought? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, and if you're self-employed, you have to do all of that. Mm. And by the way, you have to do whatever the technical skill is that you've got. And so there is a lot, a lot of stuff to that's involved in doing your own, in having your own business. Um, it can be massively rewarding. It gives you, certainly in my case, it gives me a lifestyle that I enjoy. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm very fortunate now at my stage in my career, I get to pick and choose jobs. When I first started the business, I basically took the jobs that were available. Now I only take the jobs I fancy doing, which is why I'm doing the 5G Connected Forest project. Um, the, cause frankly, it's not for the money in that case. Um, the, uh, the issue with working for yourself is a, the book stops here. Now, again, that can feel quite liberating on occasion, but if you're sitting on the 23rd of March of this year and you're a self-employed, whatever, and nobody is allowed out, nobody is working, all of a sudden you have no income, your customers are likely going bust, the book totally stops there. Mm. Um, and that can be very stressful. Um, but equally, it is very liberating. And I think I... I'm not sure if I've said this to you before. I think since I've, uh, in the last four years, I've only seen one job working for somebody else that I nearly applied for. Really? Yeah. I, I get what I need from work out of running my own business, mm. doing the projects that I do. Um, if I was 20 years old, I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> because I don't have the track record, I don't have the experience to, to, to leap straight into that. Mm. Um, I, I think, well, I can't remember how old I was when I, uh, I well, I'd got, I'd got 30 years of experience before I became a consultant at least. Um, you don't need that. Um, you certainly don't need it to have been that long, but, um, but you can't, you can't just leave school and become a consultant in, mm. in that sense, unless you're going to join, as we were saying before, unless you're going to join a consultancy company. Um, unless you've got a particularly bright idea or, again, as, as the Young Project do with some of the craft work and making products that they sell. Um, mm. Yeah, if you can do something like that, then maybe you can leave school and start your own business. Uh, in the digital world, obviously, there's a lot of online stuff that young people can start their own businesses doing. Um, but in the vast majority of cases, it's probably not going to be de a day one activity. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's all of my questions. Is there anything else that you want to add, Nick, or is, is there any other questions from people in the chat that have not been asked or that you want answering? Is there anything else that you want to add, Nick, as well, while people potentially type? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, um, I would just keep coming back to saying, uh, don't fix yourself in a rut in terms of, I must do this. Uh, be open to other opportunities. Um, take calculated risks. Um, so, yeah, if, if, if you're a chef, don't decide you're going to be an airline pilot the next day and then decide you're going to be a train driver the next day. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, when I say that, I don't mean to kind of leap around in that sense. But when you are on your work journey, there will be opportunities that come up. Uh, uh, and I think the other thing I might just, I'm, I haven't mentioned is do build up your network of contacts and keep in touch with people. So again, if I use an example of uh, my daughter who's in her 20s, um, actually, she's, I'm not sure if she's younger than you, but um, uh, so she got a phone call last week to say, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm on furlough at the moment and I'm not sure whether the company's going to uh, keep me on. And this caller said, um, well, you know how well we work together before, well, I've moved jobs and I've got a role just like you in my new company. Would you like to come and work for me? Wow, that's cool. Uh, I'll tell you in a month or so whether that what the result of that phone call was, but um, but that's because she kept in touch with people, and that's where uh, tools like LinkedIn are the obvious and easy ones. Mm. LinkedIn is a great professional resource. Uh, it's not, or I did do once, but it's not somewhere to share your picture of your breakfast. Um, uh, like I say, I did do once and somebody actually wrote and complained. So, uh, so I unfriended them, but <laughs> cause I'm that petty, but, um, the, but it is a great way of connecting with people just before, literally before this call, I was on a, a, web, a webinar about 5g and a very senior person in an engineering company in the UK who is leading 5G research was speaking. And during the call, I sent her a LinkedIn invitation. As soon as the call finished, she accepted that. And then she asked me a question about what we were doing. That's it. That becomes more and more important mm -hmm. as your career develops. And it particularly becomes important if you are thinking about doing consultancy and if you are thinking about being freelance or, or setting up your own business. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, those are some, uh, some great tips there. So thank you very much for coming on today, Nick. Really appreciate your time. And, um, and thank you to everyone who's watched this. I hope that it was useful. Something, a little bit different, maybe a career that you, you wouldn't normally hear about. And, and I think it's definitely an interesting route and perspective that Nick shared with us. So um, yeah, make sure that you stay tuned for the other Careers Talks Live on our YouTube channel below. You can find some links with uh, our website for more experience and more opportunities like this. And you can also find our socials down there too. So make sure that you um, follow us on there. And with all that being said, we will see you for the next one. Don't forget that you can get involved every Monday and Thursday with Careers Talks Live uh, using the, the link in the description.